Well, hello, here we are again. It is, I think it's number 11 in our sermon series um, on First Things First, VCF, Vernon Christian Fellowship, but First Things First. And again, just to reiterate, we are, the purpose of this sermon series is to continue building momentum in the right direction. And where is yeah. the right direction headed? Well, it's sort of two things of, of the mutual edification, the building up of one another, the caring for one another within the church. And actually that was the sort of the focus of last week's sermon of, of, of growing the church family, of being, well, no, actually being part of the church family, um, involved in the church family. Um, but then also the second aspect of, of being built up sufficiently that we got good news to share and, and and being able to do that of uh, sharing with our neighbors with our yeah. community the life of Jesus the the love of God of caring and sharing amongst us and and this week in particular we are looking at um, of growing the church family um, our involvement outside of just the walls of the church the building blocks of the church so we're looking at Isaiah 53, um, I think it's about 12 verses. 12 verses, I was about to say 13, but it's 12. 12 verses, it's not that long. Read it all, um, You yes, read it all. Uh, and we're gonna be majoring on the last three verses, but we will be talking just in reference to those first uh, nine verses. So hit pause. Have a read, and we'll be here waiting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And here we are. Landon, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to be chipping in, but Landon's going to be saying most of this. Sounds good. Uh, Probably a lot of us are familiar with this passage. Uh, it's it's amazing, and it's amazing for lots of reasons, uh, and we'll get into some. But one of the things I just I always marvel at this passage that it's written I don't know six hundred years, five hundred something six, like that. I think it's close to seven. Yeah, yes, okay. six to seven. Six seven hundred years before Jesus, and and if you go through and just circle all the things that are directly linked to Jesus' life, it's it's crazy how. How many uh, connections there are? This this thing that God spoke through Isaiah, this prophecy is is just spot on. Um, it's amazing, uh, and and yeah, we'll talk a little bit about those those first verses because uh, they're they're probably out of this passage the verses that are the most familiar to yeah. us, and rightly so. It's it's essentially uh, the gospel. As as I've been really chewing on this passage for the last several weeks, it's just been so refreshing being reminded uh, again and again of, of just what Jesus did for us and and how costly it was for him and how there's this reality if you want to use a big word uh, we could say substitutionary atonement this this reality of where where Jesus took uh, what we deserved and and in turn we get what he deserved and and we we see that in this passage it talks about him bearing our weaknesses uh, taking our sorrows, our grief, uh, talks about the Lord laying on him, uh, on Jesus, the sin of us all. Um, talks about how even though he didn't deceive anyone, he never did anything wrong, he was treated like and buried like uh, a criminal. And so we're at, we're at, I think in the church um, and in how we often relate to each other on a Sunday morning and things like communion, we're, we're quite familiar with this first chunk of this passage, and, and rightly so. Um, and the second half of the passage, however, is what we're going to focus mostly uh, on this morning. But do you have anything else you want to say about that? Not really. It, it, it's, there's the natural flow. I think you're absolutely right. Um, communion, our salvation, the story of the gospel is is so much contained in those yeah. early early verses but just as much as those three verses follow on from or the last three verses follow on from the first nine so this should 
follow yeah. on in our lives right. as well. And that's why we're we're yeah. looking at it because yeah. without this, and mm. yeah, I'm sort of jumping ahead into what we're going to be sharing, but but without this, mm. the first part is incomplete. It's yeah. like, well, so what? Yeah. Which is a tough thing to say when it's like, yeah, but it means I'm saved. It means mm. it's changed my life. But there is a greater purpose. And yeah. that's what these three verses really sort of highlight and what we want to embrace. Yeah. So yeah, before, right, I think it's right before we get to verse 9, it says something about Jesus. It says that uh, his life was cut short, uh, that he, he died without descendants. We know, we know that Jesus uh, died around the age 30, 33, somewhere in there. Uh, he, was, he was young, and we also know he was never married. Uh, we know that he didn't have any uh, children. Uh, we know that he didn't have a place to lay his head at night. Uh, we know that he lived off the generosity of other people. He had no he had no inheritance to leave uh, for anyone. He had no children to leave. Uh, he had no name uh, to leave for himself. Naturally speaking, uh, his life was was cut short. He had no descendants, and yet, right the right after that, the verse says um, that uh, it when his life is made an offering uh, for sin, he'll have many descendants. And so we we see this reality in in what Jesus did that that he. Uh, he gave up something earthly, earthly descendants, in order to actually receive something far, far greater. Uh, and that was an eternal uh, spiritual descendants, uh, children upon children, uh, this in ever increasing and, and growing family. And uh, I don't know about you, but when I hear the word descendants or in your version, it might uh, say offspring, I think about uh, Abraham, uh, I think Genesis 12 or something like that, where where God comes to, to Abraham and, and he promises him uh, descendants uh, as numerous as the sand on the seashore and as, as numerous as the, the stars in the, in the sky. And, and that, that's what is being referred to here, uh, that through Jesus, through the one seed that came from Abraham, the one descendant Jesus, there would be this breaking forth of, of descendants of a family um, far too great to even uh, number. And so Jesus was willing to let go of, of just building an earthly family in order to secure yeah. uh, an eternal family and, and one far, far greater than he could ever build. And it makes me uh, think back to Psalm, Psalm 20, or to Psalm 2, uh, which some of us would be familiar, but there's this great line where the father says to the son, uh, ask of me for the nations and I'm, I'll give them to you as your inheritance. And, and we understand that Jesus made that request, and that's what Isaiah would be referring to as well, that Jesus did ask for the nations as his inheritance. Uh, he gave up an earthly inheritance to receive one that was e eternal, and it's it's this family yeah. that, that he, he was after. Yeah, you know, when you think of that scripture and nations, it's so easy to think, oh, geographical nations, right. Canada, U US, Mexico, and beyond. But the people of God come from every yeah. tribe and tongue and nation. God has taken out, caused people to be born again and gathered from every tribe and tongue and nation. Even yeah. people with a surname like Zabalotnia, that's <laughs> his surname. Um, yeah, it's yeah. just awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so first off, we see that, uh, that Jesus, uh, that the Father, is, it was after a family uh, and, and a growing family, yeah. uh, many, many descendants. And then it, the passage goes on to say that it, uh, the Lord's good plan will prosper in, in his hands, in Jesus' hands, the good plan. What's the good plan? The good plan is the fa this family, this growing family, descendants as, as numerous as, as the stars and the sand. That's the good plan. And we're told that that will prosper in Jesus' hands, yeah. that the, the, the intention, the desire uh, that's in the Father's heart uh, when, when placed in Jesus' hands, it's going to prosper. Uh, and it's interesting because as we read throughout the Gospels, as we see how the, the Gospel, the good news is carried out to the whole area around Jerusalem and beyond, uh, we see that it's carried out um, no longer simply through Jesus. At first it was, then he passed it on to his apostles, then they passed it on and passed it on and passed it on. 
and we see actually that that it's it's everyday common Christians yeah. that actually the the good plan of God is in their hands, yeah. uh, which which fits with other scriptures like Second Corinthians chapter five that talks about how you and I uh, are are ambassadors. We've been entrusted. Uh, with the message and with the ministry of reconciliation that God's actually put it into our hands and said, I trust you with this. This is your responsibility to now carry uh, to those those around you. Uh, and it's not, I don't think it at all, it's that Jesus has withdrawn and said, okay, you do it. But it's the way in which he actually, the, the good plan of the Father prospers in Jesus' hands is actually through you and I, um, through you, uh, through all of us. And, and this reality that, that that's what we're called, called into. Um, as uh, it says in Corinthians, as grace extends to more and more people, um, there's going to be an increase of, of thankfulness. There's going to be an increase of God's glory, that that's the desire, that, that it would go out. Uh, and then uh, we also see it in, in the, the next verse. It sees, says that when, when Jesus sees all that is accomplished, um, because of his anguish, because of what he's gone through, he will be satisfied. And, and I love that word, satisfied. Uh, it makes me just think of some of the moments in my life where I've, I have been just so satisfied, just so filled with joy and, and a sense of things, things are right and good. Uh, and I think that what we've experienced, what I've experienced, how you've experienced that is, is often a, a, a small piece of of what this passage is talking about, um, how for for Jesus there's this deep satisfaction when his family grows, um, and and the only thing uh, that can be satisfied is is a desire, uh, something that that we want, that we hunger, and so we we see in this passage that that there's this deep hunger and desire in in God uh, for more people. Uh, to to see and to understand and to know, uh, to follow, to obey, uh, to experience uh, what what Jesus has done. Um, yeah, anything to add before I <laughs> carry it's, on? It's, I think it's, I mean, for me, satisfaction is one of the words I highlighted and, and the Lord's will highlighted and and the idea of the lord's because that's how it's put in in the read in the version i was reading yes it yet yeah, it was the lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer um and this sense of the lord's will i was thinking so what is what is that and it, i came to the same words that landed it. it it's about his desire it's not just my will but for god my will is my desire it's, yeah. it's what i truly want we see it right at the beginning in creation of making mm. all of creation and in the middle of it, it making man who in another part of scripture is referred to as the apple of god's eye it's it's the center of his focus mm. which which is for me mind-boggling that that god would be mindful of man yeah um Again, quoting from Psalm there. And, and, and yet it's his desire and it's his will and he has gone to this length mm. to fulfill it. And when I think of the Lord Jesus, he's not mentioned by name, but as Lannan says, you know, after he has suffered, he will see the result and be satisfied. God, the, the, the Son of God, satisfied. And I think, hang on, hang on, Charlie, stop here and wait a moment. If this is something that satisfies right. God, then it's got to be, <laughs> Charlie, stop and think about this, because if it satisfies God, it must be satisfying for me, who's been made in the image of God, right. you, who's been made in the image of God. Mm. Um, and I, I, I was reminded of that, oh, an old rock and roll song, I can't get no satisfaction. And it's like, yes, you can, mm. here is satisfaction yeah. it's costly yeah but here is satisfaction and it's available for yeah. you and and i just think for so many i've heard so many mothers and fathers talk about the most fulfilling moment in their lives was when they saw their child born and held their child for the yeah. first time and there's 
there's something that is in the heart of God in that. And this passage, and if you cheat and go into the next chapter, Isaiah 54, where it talks about rejoice, O barren woman, you know, the, the child of the ba- or the children right. of the barren are more numerous than than you know the the not barren and it, it's saying there's something to be satisfied here this is not just for natural mums and dads it's yep. for every single person in the family of god to to be grown up to the place where we now engage in this ministry and see the fruit and be satisfied yeah yeah no that's good yeah. that's super helpful uh and yeah i mean i think for for any of us who have been able to see uh, God's family grow in in into other people's lives. See people begin to even begin to be interested in 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 the Bible, interested in in Jesus, interested in in following Him, uh, grappling with those things. I I can recall times of just coming home, like bursting through the door, just ready to share with uh, Brittany of of a conversation I got to have with someone uh, or. Or something, some some way, I got to pray for someone, or, or see God move in, in someone's life who, who doesn't yet know Him, and there there is a satisfaction that is is incredible and is is deep. And it's not. I've just got to throw in this as well. It's not just the for me. It's not just the satisfaction of seeing what's going on in this individual's life, mm. but but it's and this will make sense for many of you. But it's the satisfaction of. Yes, justice is being worked out. Jesus paid the price, and and he and the prices that he has paid makes it just and right that people are brought into salvation. Not just that people are saved, but the work of the enemy yeah. to rob and kill and destroy is nullified, mm-hmm. and and people are brought out of darkness. It's a satisfaction of a cry for justice. It's a satisfaction of the cry for healing. It's a satisfaction for pretty much every human yeah. cry that there can be yeah if i believe that I, and we can't go into all of jesus but but i really believe this if there's anything in your life that you feel is unsatisfactory unsatisfying somewhere in this is the satisfaction that will bring peace and, and yeah and, totally. and rightness into our lives yes yeah. yeah thank you that's good so the next next point I want to make from this passage is it says that uh, because of Jesus' experience, it is possible for many to be counted righteous, and and specifically that phrase, it is possible. And your translation might say something different, but it makes me think of what Jesus said to his disciples, who were struggling to see that actually it's possible for harvest for salvation to come to a, a group of Samaritans, and and Jesus says in John four, hey look. Like lift up your head and, and take a look. Uh, the harvest is is ripe. It's ready. It's ready to be picked. Uh, it is possible uh, for people to to come to Jesus and and I've caught myself saying and maybe you have as well uh, that it just seems like people aren't interested or it seems really hard uh, or challenging uh, and and speaking in a way that doesn't actually communicate what is written here and in other places in scripture that it says very clearly because of Jesus experience because of what he went through on the cross it is possible for many many people to be counted righteous and and I think somewhere in here uh, somewhere in our growth and our journey in in grabbing a hold of what truly satisfies God's heart and getting involved in that and seeing his family grow, uh, we have to tackle this reality of unbelief. Uh, in I think you told me Second Corinthians four, something like that. Um, Paul says uh, that, and he's quoting a psalm, but he says, "I believed, and therefore I spoke." Uh, that it was out of this place of faith that he was able to speak about Jesus, speak about the gospel, proclaim the gospel, and. And if we take that on the flip side, then we could say it's because of our unbelief that we do not speak. And I, I just think in my own life of times where I have not spoken, where I could have, uh, 
uh, and and it's because of unbelief. It's thinking that uh, this isn't going to make a difference in people's lives, or people aren't interested, or what I have to say it's not relevant or applicable, or I'm not the right person to say it, or things like that. It's it's because of this unbelief uh, that that holds me back. Instead of going, man, because of Jesus and what He did for me, it is possible. I believe, therefore, I will speak, I will share, I will tell. Um, I I hold back and and actually, in a sense, diminish what Jesus did, yeah. rather than than raising it up. Yeah. So unbelief. I I was just talking to someone this last week, and they were recalling how uh, we had some some friends of our church family, um, uh, Rich and Kate Colebrook, come through. Uh, three years ago, maybe four, a while ago. Oh, it's better than that. Four, maybe five. <laughs> oh, but yes, yeah, a, a while, while ago. ago. And uh, one of the things they did right off the bat, talking about kind of this whole this whole reality of, of seeing God's family grow, one of the things they did right off the bat was they talked about unbelief and how we have to deal with that um, and recognize that if if we do not believe uh, that that we are part of God's plan and purpose that he's put his good plan in our hands. If we don't believe that people are interested, if we don't believe, then then we're not we're not actually going to be able to move on to actually sharing. And we wondered about how much to say about this. And I'm going to jump in at this point and just say, you know, unbelief is one of those unseen things. How can you tell what I believe or what I don't believe? And and I say that because at one level, it's it's no big deal. It's it's not it's not. It's at one level no big deal, and yet it might be as we're talking about it that you think, well, well, I think the question for me used to be, do I really believe the fields are white for harvest, that, that there are people ready to become Christians right now? And I just had to say, I believe it because it's written here, and I believe that Jesus doesn't tell lies, but I don't believe it here or here. Help me, Lord. I believe, but I don't believe. And I think if you're in that same position, it's simple, it's easy. Don't feel condemnation, yeah. just feel a conviction that that's the truth and just say, even now, hit pause again and just say, Lord, I I hear what Lan and Charlie, but more, I hear what you have said, Jesus, that the fields yeah. are white harvest. You speak the truth and I don't think that way. So please forgive me mm. for not thinking that way and help me in my unbelief. Boom. Yeah. Hit pause, come back, and we'll carry on. And we might mention that again at the yeah. end. Because it's such a key thing. Yeah. It, it's, it changes everything. Yeah. Yeah, totally. That prayer that we see in the Gospels, I believe, but also help my unbelief. There's a measure. Uh, if you're even watching, if you haven't shut this video off already, it's because there's a measure of faith yes. in your life. Um, but there might also be some, some unbelief. Uh, there still is some in my life that Absolutely needs to be likewise, dealt with. Yeah. So um, you're not alone in that. So be encouraged. No. Uh, and then, lastly, what I what I want to uh, end end with is is this reality that uh, this this truth that Jesus intercedes for rebels is how my translation puts it. Um, yours might say something different. He intercedes for transgressors or or something like that. But it is such good news that that we can hold to that jesus is is interceding he's praying he's laboring uh to and has already on the cross but is continuing through through prayer and intercession uh to see people around us uh reached and and that is is just such good news it, it burns on on god's heart it's high on his prayer list um to to be to be thinking about to be um to be praying about is, is this reality that there are still many people that he wants to bring into his family. And that's just a big encouragement for me to be doing the same thing, uh, to be praying for my neighbors, to be praying for my family, my friends. Uh, and maybe you think, I don't really know anyone that well who's not uh, a, a Christian, who doesn't already know Jesus. Then, then you can start by praying. I can start by praying, God, bring people into my life, help me build connections, help me build relationship, help me become friends with people uh, who, who don't yet know you so that I can be part of seeing your, your family grow. Uh, Jesus taught us to pray um, that his kingdom would come. 
and and to ask that we would we would be part of that seeing his will being done his will like you mentioned his will his desire is is that there would be many many descendants uh, a growing ever increasing growing family um and and praying um specifically uh, bible talks about there's this veil for some people uh that that keeps them from seeing uh seeing jesus uh, even even hearing about him just sounds like foolishness to them and it's because there's this veil and and we can be uh, involved in praying that that veil would be removed so that people can actually see jesus and so prayer what a wonderful place to basically start with everything and we just talked about it with unbelief um to also start uh with this whole idea of god how how could you use me uh, start by praying praying for the people around you uh, and join in in god's heart in that way and, and you'll find that God's heart grows in you, uh, a, a desire and a hunger to see uh, people people saved and, and following Jesus. So, Yeah, I know you're about to say anything to add. Yeah. And I, I, I don't. What, apart from this, we've spoken around this. This Sunday, Landon's going to be speaking some more in our Sunday gathering. Um, and it will be recorded and it'll be posted to our website, BCF, Burnham Christian Fellowship. Search for that and you'll find us. And, um, and I know he's going to share more. Um, and I think it, it, if this is grabbing you, then please take the time to, to sort of go there and listen. It, it probably won't be posted there until Monday, Tuesday. Um, Monday, Tuesday, March the... <laughs> 1st, 20, 20, 20, 22nd, something yeah, sure. like that. I've got it down as March the 120th, but I don't think that's no, right. No, I... <laughs> Genuinely, 120th. Yeah, I missed the one from then. <laughs> um, I think it'd be good to pray. Yeah. I think there's, uh, yeah, lead us in prayer. Yeah. Yeah, and just an encouragement to be hearing from the Lord um, first if maybe it's first steps or next steps in this. And, and the reality is it'll be different for you probably than for me. Um, but what, what, is, what is God asking you to do? Um, how can you this week uh, join in this, this hunger and desire that's in God's heart? How can you be part of that? Uh, and I'm confident that he'll, he will speak to you and show you what that, what that can look like. So... Be encouraged to wrestle with the, the question of, okay, Lord, now what? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to respond? Um, so, yeah, let me pray for us. And before he does, I said I can. <laughs> you know, we said it right at the beginning. This message in our sermon series, First Things First, it's like this is the central message, even though it's number 11, is that everything else is building momentum to engaging in this aspect of yeah of seeing people like you and me and you coming out of the dominion of darkness into his his kingdom yeah. being born again becoming part of his family to then yeah. engage in this again and yeah. again and again yeah absolutely yeah. thank you yeah so thank you lord uh, for all that you have done for us mm -hmm. what we read about here and uh, how it it really pleased you to send uh, Jesus into the world and Jesus that you were willing and pleased to uh, go through anguish and pain and suffering and death uh, in order to pay the price uh, for our sin and we're so grateful uh, for that and we're so grateful that you brought us into your family uh, but we also recognize it's it in one sense it's a family business and the business uh, that you call us to be about is uh, your business and it's about seeing uh, your family grow and seeing more and more people coming to understand and follow uh, you Jesus and to change their lives and to uh, give you glory uh, through that and so yeah we want to be involved in that and we probably have some fears uh, we probably have some uh, baggage probably have some disappointments and discouragements that we've experienced in this area, uh, but you're big enough and able to handle all those things. So we just want to bring them to you. And we want to hear from you freshly today, uh, how we can 
live this out. Live out your good plan. How it can prosper in our hands as it prospers in your hands as well. So thank you, Jesus. We love you. Please help us. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. And we'll look forward to sharing with you guys next week as well. Yeah, we're heading towards the end of our series. Yeah. Is next week the last one? Mm, yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Awesome. Have a good week. Yeah. See ya. <laughs>